Today I'm gonna do another making the song video. This one is from Koa Heva. It's called Why Oh Why, featuring Leilani. If you like the song, um, I'm gonna include it in the description of this video. Click on the link, buy the song, support um, Koa and his music. Um, it's a great dude, great guy. All right, so let's start from the beginning. Um, I'm gonna go through all the tracks. Uh, I'm gonna go through the plugins and you can see what I did for this song. Alright guys, let's start off with the percussion and let's see what that sounds like. Alright, and let's hear that within the mix. Alright, so you can see a few things here. Um, I did some volume automation for this section. Um, so it made it fit better within the mix. There are also things that's bouncing back and forth. So if you look at here, things should be coming out the left speaker, this uh, hit out the right, and so forth. So let's listen to that. And so I kind of push things off to the side just to give uh, the percussion some separation. We got some other stuff here. So more of that block sound. So that's a percussion. Um, let's move on to the drums. Let's take a listen to that. So we'll start off with the kick. And this is all done in addictive drums. Add the snare, hi-hat. These are the toms, which you can see nothing's going on right now. Add in the overheads, the room sound, and then the effects. As you can see, it's a pretty simple beat. Um, I don't have the MIDI tracks for this, but um, yeah, it was all done using a MIDI keyboard. And then the sounds are edited in Addictive Drums too. So that's the drums. As far as processing goes, um, there's a lot of stuff done with the kick, you know, taking off a lot of highs, lows, having some low cut filtering. Uh, the second one is taking out some of the mids at around the 1K range. Third one, again, a little bit more EQing. Uh, this one, I think I used it for the compression and then added some ozone on here, which is not doing anything. And I think I just used it to look at um, the EQ curve with the graphical bars here. Um, so without all of that plugins, 
Here's how it sounds. And so when creating the drums in Addictive Drums 2, I wanted, you know, a thick uh, drum sound. So you can tell that the kick and the snare has that deep sound to it. Um, but then when I got to the mix stage, I realized, well, it's a little bit too much. And even in the mix, um, this song is very bass heavy, but that was kind of my intention. I wanted that thick sound um, in the low end. But coming out of Addictive Drums 2, it was just way too much. So basically a lot of, you know, this plugin, the channel strip, plus this SSL EQ is cutting out a ton of that lows. So if we just listen to the kick. Let's turn off this percussion. And let's listen to that with the plugins in there. So a lot of things are more, uh, the kick is more tight, less bottom end in there. Let's take a look at, look at the snare sound. So with this trim knob, looks like I just pushed up the gain a little bit to drive these two plugins. Um, so you can see here, I'm taking out a ton of the lows on that snare sound. And then using the SSL channel strip for uh, no EQ, so probably just a compression. So if we listen to it without those two uh, plugins. So you can see how uh, deep and just thick the snare sound is without those. Um, and I thought it would have sounded good coming out of Addictive Drums 2, but then with, within the mix, I had to make some major adjustments as far as the EQ curve. So with it... So even with all those lows cut out, it's, it still has a you know, pretty big sound, um, a lot more presence to it that cuts through the mix, and you know not as dead. So within the whole mix, the kick and snare, which I'll just go through the kick and snare because that's the meat um, of the drum sound. So let's listen to that. Whoa, whoa. And let's take a listen just for fun without those plugins on there and see um, how it sounds like before and then after. You can see a ton of the low end got cleaned up, ton of the low mids um, got scooped out, um, and it fit, you know, a little bit better. I also see that there is um, some eighth note snare automation going on, so let's take a look at that, which is here. <laughs> So that's just a delay sound going into um, uh, the standard Digirack medium delay plugin, and then followed by you know a few plugins here. So that is that sound there. So just to add a different dimension, you know, a little bit of hits here and there. Um, and then hi-hat, we got toms. Uh, out of Addictive Drums 2, you can separate the overheads plus the room mics. So we can take a listen to the, those guys. So this is the overheads. And this is the room mic. And in the mix, it's very subtle. This room mic is at minus 36. This one is at minus 12.6. Um, 
but yeah it's just there to add you know a little bit to the sound and then I also had some effects coming out of Addictive Drums 2 usually I use my reverbs through the Pro Tools plugins um, or third-party plugins but in this case I liked what the Addictive Drums 2 um, reverb had so I uh, just printed that to a stereo track you can listen to that and so that's the drum sound and then all of the drums are bussed into this drum bus which has a little bit of SSL compression and then I'm using the Kramer tape for a tiny bit of uh, tape saturation so let's move on to the bass sound So it's a big bass sound, very melodic. Um, and just to note, this track, I created the beat and then I sent it over to Koa and he wrote to this beat. Um, but this beat was basically just, you know, a straightforward eight bar loop um, that just got looped over and over. So, you know, I'll, I think the bass sound was like from, I don't know, or the bass recording was from here to here and then the rest is looped. And then throughout the song, I took stuff out and made some edits, but that's about it. So let's take a look at the two different bass tracks. Um, They're both uh, the identical recording. I just separated it into two different tracks and processed them differently. So the first one is meant to be like um, the straight DI recording. So all it has is the uh, Renaissance EQ on it and filtering out most of the highs with a 2 dB cut at 261. So little cut on the low mids. So we'll see how that sounds like with the plugin and without. So this is with. without so a lot of the bass sound doesn't change um, it's just that there was a lot of fret noise going on um, so what I did was filter that out so you don't hear a lot of that fret noise um, but I mean the bass sounds pretty much intact with and without the plugin for the second bass sound let's take a listen to that and this is meant to be like recording through an amp in a studio um, and i mentioned this in my previous video for give me one more chance by leilani if you haven't watched that go check that one out but um i mentioned in there that you know i do all my recordings in my bedroom so I can't do live drums, I can't record through amps, everything is done in the box. So to try to get a certain sound, um, I use a lot of plugins to do that. In this case, uh, I try to mimic, you know, the double recording with the direct bass plus the amp. For the amp, I'm using the Waves GTR amp here, and it's just the, um, the guitar amp mono plugin. I'm using the uh, Thunder amp type, which is meant to be a very dubby bass sound. And you can hear it on this track. So let's take a listen. And so without it, that's the original sound. 
and then with the same EQ from the direct track, but then adding on the amp sound to it. And you notice it's very soft um, in the background and it's just meant to add a tiny bit of that amp sound to the direct sound because the direct sound was pretty good. Um, but I liked, you know, the warmth that this amp gave. So I just blended that a little bit with the direct sound. So I'm going to play the original bass sound and then add in the uh, amp bass sound just to see, you know, what difference that made. So without... And with... So super, super, super minor difference. Probably even inaudible. Maybe, um, but with a subwoofer, you can kind of, you know, you can feel that low end with the amp sound versus without it. And it's very minor. Even if I made the track without it, probably wouldn't know the difference, but um, I felt like it was needed. And then the bass is routed to a bass bus, which has a little bit of cleaning up on the low end. So rolled off at 40 hertz and then clean up some of the um, low mids. So we'll move on to the guitar um, pick track, which is mimicking the bass sound. So again, if you haven't watched Leilani's One More Chance video, I did the exact same thing in her song where um, I'm, I'm doing a muted uh, bass picking that mimics the bass line. So we'll take a listen at that. And I'll add in the bass sound so you can hear it as well. So straightforward, you know, just playing the exact line as the bass is doing. As far as processing goes, utilizing a tiny bit of spring reverb with a roll off with some uh, a stomp box EQ. And then even more roll off with um, this Renaissance EQ. And then with um, a little bit of cut on at the 2k range so in reality this eq curve here probably doesn't even matter because i have this eq following it that cuts off you know a lot of the low end but whenever i'm mixing and i pull up a plugin and it sounds good and then you know I think, you know, it needs a little bit something, like it needs, you know, additional roll off or something like that. Um, during the mix, I'll try to resolve it with the existing plugin. So I'll maybe pull down, you know, the lows a little bit more here at the 125 range. Um, but it, sometimes if it doesn't work, I just follow it up with a different EQ and, you know, get the sound that I want. So it might seem redundant doing a cut here and, you know, a slight cut here. But once, you know, when I apply this, I'm not going to go back and adjust this because that just might change the sound again and I might not be happy with it. So I, I just leave it, continue on with the next plugin, make some adjustments um, and yeah, move forward. So just like the bass sound where I have the direct track followed by a process track. In the case of the guitar bass picking, I have my clean track here, which, um, yeah, 
and then I follow it up with an affected um, bass picking track on this one. And I pan the clean side to the left, the affected side to the right, and looks like, according to the plugins, the affected one, which is here, is just taking off a little bit more lows. You can see that. And adding in a lot more spring reverb. So let's take a listen to that. Just the affected side, which would be on the right side if you're listening in headphones. So yeah, just that super kind of dub sound with tons of effects. And with the direct sound, it sounds like this. And so initially the concept was that I would have the two sounds um, coming down the middle or anywhere, but they would, you know, they'd have the same panning. So if it was, you know, minus 62, minus 62 or whatever, and it would sound like this. And the idea was that the direct sound would give a little bit more clarity and then the affected sound would just add some, um, some space in there. Uh, and then I thought, you know what, why don't I just try something out, put the clean side on the left, dirty side on the right, um, and it came out pretty cool. You can't really hear it too much in the mix, but if you really pay attention, it kind of gives that, um, you know, kind of gives that space, pushes things out, leaves the center um, pretty clear for the vocals. So in the mix, let's try to take a listen to that. So that's that. Here's a skank, pretty straightforward. Play that. Without the EQ processing. So I did some dramatic EQing there. On the first one, just a little bit of mids cut. And then the second one, there's, you know, a filter at 235 hertz um, and that's where you're hearing majority of the sound change and then of course this huge boost of almost 8 db at almost 9 kilohertz so a lot of high ends cutting the lows um, just to make it fit a little bit better in the mix we got some automation going on here let's try to find that so the piano delay, which is here, let's take a listen to that. Oh, let's add the piano delay. And we'll take a listen in the mix. In my heart, in my feelings, so let me take you back to the So just a delay when the piano ends. Um let's see, moving on to some guitar skanks. Looks like I recorded two separate skanks here. One pan left, one pan right. Take a listen to that. And if you notice, this one's pretty clear that things are looped. You know, you got the one section here followed by uh, long strumming. And then it goes again with that long strumming, goes again. So you can see that this beat initially started off as just a simple loop. So let's take a listen to that skank. So short staccato skanks, and then um, towards the end of those eight bars, I hold out the notes there.
and then back to the skanks. So in the mix, sounds like this. Moving on to the electric piano. So you can hear it's doing like, you know, a lot of major sevens, some uh, major ninths. And then in the middle here, it stops, it mimics the bass line with that um, in this part. Oh, yeah. And then continues on with the skank again. So if you try to pay attention to that road sound, um, it's, not, it's not a staccato skank like the piano and the guitar. Um, it's a little bit more held out type of skank. And then it jumps to mimicking the bass line, then back to the skank. So let's listen to that in the mix. So I'm sure at first when you were listening to it, you didn't hear it, but now that you see you know what's going on um, and if you really pay attention you can hear it just ever so slightly in the background and it just adds you know a different texture to the mix and then we got the bubble here let's take a listen to that so pretty standard bubble nothing too special here uh, did a lot of filtering filtered out lows highs just kept the mids let's hear how it sounds without the eq so very full organ sound um, but since there's so much going on in the mix um, you know just cut out what wasn't working and uh, just kept you know a part of that sound so in the mix, let's listen to the, the bubble. Alright. Moving on to the pad. Let's listen to what we got here. In my heart and my feeling. So let me take you back to then. Very subtle sound. Let's take a listen to that. So it's like a synth pad there, and it looks like it happens again um, here. So let's take a listen to that section. This is a simple synth pad happening throughout the course um, and filtering out as much as this SSL EQ could go, which is 350 hertz. So anything below that is being cut out, some low mids and some highs. Moving on to this, looks like it's muted, so nothing going on there. So let me hide that. And then uh, as far as instruments go, that's about it. So moving on to the vocals. We got some ablid tracks going on here. Um, and in this tutorial, I'll just probably focus on the lead vocal, which happens here. So let's take a listen to that. Am I feeling so let me take you back to the night you and I first met I seen only you in the full room Just rocking the way to the groove And let me tell you what was on my mind As I made my way to you I said I hope that she's feeling the same 
So there's a lot of processing going on here. Um, so let's take a look at all of that. So we got some EQ, we got ozone EQ, and some multiband compression. We got a deesser, we got another deesser, and then we got a channel strip. So there's a lot going on with his lead vocals. Um, so one by one, we'll start off with uh, the EQ. First, we'll take a listen without all of those plugins, and then we'll talk about um, what I did with each one. So it's mute them all. Feel it. So let me take you back to the night when you and I first met. I seen only you in the full room, just rocking the way to the groove. So for one, you can tell that without the plugins, it's very loud. <laughs> so I try to avoid that as much as possible so that um, the gain staging is correct. You know, if I do some EQ, I gain stage it to make up the volume or gain stage it to pull back the volume. And in this case, it sounds like I didn't do that. So I can't really do a good comparison here. But anyways, you can tell that this vocal uh, was very bright. So what I did was with the SSL EQ, took down about 7 dB on the top end. And then with the Ozone, took out a little bit more top end, did a tiny boost at the 1K, took out some of the low mids, and then used two DSers because the S's still were sticking out. So with just those two EQs. So let me take you back to the night you and I first met. So with those two, you know, taking out the highs and doing some adjustment with the mids made um, the vocal sit a little bit little bit better within the mix those s's weren't sticking out his breaths weren't, weren't sticking out too much um, and then adding in the deesser kind of knocked out you know more of those s's so let's take a listen to that so let me take you back to the night where you and i first met i seen only you in the full room so this first deesser um is taking out uh, those S's or those highs at 6K with a peak of about 6 dB, almost 6 dB. And then for the second DSer, it's taking the frequency focus is a little bit more, a um, little bit higher at 76, uh, 100 hertz. And... Yeah, so let me take you back to the night you and I first met I seen and this one is just taking out you know maybe one to two db very very small amounts um, on that one and then with the SSL channel taking out a little bit lows and I think I'm using the compression here let's check that out Let take you back to the night you and I first met I seen only you in the full room Just rocking the way So barely hitting that 3 dB reduction um, on the compressor. So with those plugins, things f are fitting, you know, a little bit better within the mix. Um, the edit screen only shows up to five plugins. So let's just see if there is anything else on the lead vocal, which is named okay, vocal six. So this guy here. So yeah, it's just those five plugins on that one. And so with and without, I'll toggle through it and you can hear uh, the difference that these plugins made. Yeah, so let me take you back to the night 
When you and I first met, I seen only you in the full room, just rocking the way to the groove. And let me tell you what was on my mind as I made my way to you. I said I hope that she's feeling the same old vibe. There's no other way to get her off my mind. Oh, oh, oh. So yeah, um, the cutting of the highs is you know pretty aggressive, and you can hear, especially after listening to the unprocessed sound versus the processed, the processed. You know, after listening to that very bright, direct vocal sound, sounded a bit dead. But um, again, that's kind of the sound I wanted to go for with this beat is, you know, that more warm type of sound, kind of like I talked about in the beginning with the drums. I wanted that deep kick, that deep snare. I wanted the vocals to be a little bit more round. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's a sound that I was trying to go for. So that's the vocal. And then we got some backups here um, and I won't go over those but yeah basically you got you know backups in the chorus you got some ad-libs here and there and yeah so that's about it if you guys want to hear anything more with the song uh, just let me know if you guys want me to focus on the drums focus on the bass guitar pianos whatever just let me know and I can go through uh, the, the session in more detail if you haven't checked out, again, my other Making the Song video from Leilani's One More Chance, check that out. And then I'm also doing some uh, video tutorials on different sounds. So the one tutorial that I currently have up is on organ bubbles. So if you haven't checked that one out, go check it out. All right, thanks guys. If you like this, subscribe, um, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.